Hi there and welcome to this week's astrological forecast for the week starting at the 3rd of July ending at the 10th. Uh, I'm your modern shaman Maria Maria in Rainbow Land here from my showroom slash our meditation room uh, slash home in Tokyo, Japan. If you're new to this channel, I am from Denmark and I'm an astrologer composer and songwriter and Maria Maria and I'm a TV journalist I have been filming 550 programs for Danish television I'm producing programs for the whip and uh, then I'm making these weekly astrological forecasts and I have my own clothing label Rainbow Land anything I do is to inspire people to follow their hearts not trends. That's what I have been trying to do since I was 19. Today I am 39 years old. When I stopped uh, going to school, I started my own business right away. Where I tried to follow my heart and I have been through many different stories, many different things in my life. And this is what taught me about astrology because I've been following the stars uh, and seeing which aspects and which uh, constellations in the sky created which situations around the world and in my personal life and the life of friends etc so my background from in astrology is i learned a lot from my uncle and aunt 50 years of uh, astrology professional astrologers um, and then life taught me and i'm also channeling so it's a combination of astrology and what needs to be said we start out with the collective forecast and after that we will go into the personal sun signs. So uh, if you're on this channel right now you can look down and see if we are on your, your personal sign. Um, the collective forecast is necessary because it tells about how the world is at large, what we as a collective need to, to learn. And that's important because you are always interacting with other people unless you are alone, home, sick, in your bed or otherwise isolated from the world. Um, this is the general energy and when we go into the personal sun sign it's more precise of what could uh, be happening or what kind of schedule, overall schedule can be for you this week. So uh, we will start out with the sky as it is and every week it's interesting to see where the moon is because that's the fastest moving so that's kind of dictating what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis and it and if you look at this this is the zodiac and we can we can look at the different signs as the rooms we enter the houses are um, what are the frames of the rooms the signs what's inside the room and the planets, we just call them all planets, even though some are asteroids, some are luminaries, like the moon and the sun, etc. We just call them planets. The planets are the players, the, the people, or the characters in the room, right? So this is the perspective from which I'm going to explain the things going on. So when the moon goes through the whole zodiac, it takes 28 to 29 days. Um, and depending on who the moon meets, which planet, it will activate these planets. And depending on which geometric alignments, um, aspects the different planets make to each other, different sorts of situations, um, loose, tense, tight, supporting, more challenging, uh, the story will be or the schedule will be so it's always important for a weekly report like this or daily uh, or monthly for that matter but but to see where is the moon because that's where the storyline starts on that day and as this week starts um, the moon is in here the moon is in Pisces 
So it will go from Pisces into Aries into Taurus throughout this moon cycle or this week. Um, so this means that we will start out the week in the meditative, psychological, more behind the scenes, like I am in connection with the universe or God or whatever you want to call it. I'm meditating, I'm in out nature, I'm getting in touch with, with my spiritual nature. And that's collective because that's kind of connect, connecting to all there is. Because on this side of the zodiac we are in the impersonal signs where it's about other people, groups, in different situations and ways. Then we move into Aries and then the whole new cycle starts. The Pisces is the end of the cycle. So we kind of, as this week begins, ending a lunar cycle and starting a new one with Aries. Um, where we have the fire and again it's personal, it's about my identity, where I want to go in the world. Um, the new ideas come, the inspiration, etc., the fire, the passion. And then it goes into Taurus where it's, okay, let's manifest these ideas, let's see if they work in real life, and uh, etc. But throughout this journey it activates different things. It uh, will start by crossing over. Um, Neptune here in Pisces, and we can roughly say that Neptune is in a in a grand trine this week. Um, you can we can talk about exact um, aspects and constellations where where it's like okay, it's in 16 degrees, 16 degrees, 16 degree, degrees. That's an exact constellation. But even if it's three degrees apart, uh, it's still you know, in contact with each other. So it will activate this grand trine. You can see there will be a trine um, between the Sun, Jupiter, the Sun in Cancer, Jupiter in Scorpio, and uh, Neptune over here in Pisces. And the Moon will activate this as we start this week. These are the intuitive signs. These are the water signs, or ether. You also say. And let's just keep it simple here. And uh, these signs are all about our past. Uh, in one way or the other. Pisces is about letting go, surrendering. It's about how can I surrender myself to this life, to God or to whatever you want to call it. How do I stop my ego from coming in and wanting this and that and keep holding on to something tightly? How do I let go? And this report this week for me is or oh, I, I have chosen to call it letting go of the role of the victim. The reason why I do astrology is, oh, I, I even started going into it myself, was to understand why these situations, these different situations occur to me in my life. Why does, is this, why, why does this pattern keep on re repeating itself? Why do I keep on meeting these kinds of people? Instead of feeling like I'm a victim, oh, now society did this to me. Oh, now my boss did this to me. Why does my boyfriend always uh, say this or do this or girlfriend always cheat on me or mom always uh, bug me, etc. This is because astrology can help you understand you don't need astrology. You can also just ask yourself, ask, close your eyes and ask inside your heart, or I call it follow your heart. My uh, twin flame, my partner, Martin Mikkelsen, he uh, would call it the higher self, I would also, but he is writing a book about the higher self, and that's how he says it. Why not ask your higher self? You don't need astrology, you don't need tarot, you don't need other external forces. You have all answers within you in your heart. That's why I always say, don't follow trends, follow your heart. And in all piece of clothes I design in every song and in any program, I always keep repeating this because I'm not the one holding your answers. I'm just trying to guide you to what you already know. Because we all know all the answers. If we open up, if we dare to let go and release even anything that's clouding our minds, and that's what the moon in Pisces can activate, because it activates Jupiter in Scorpio, which is deep transform transformation on a very deep level, a journey we've been trying to transform since 2012. I'm not going to go further into why I'm saying that. You can see that in other programs. 
Uh, and then we have cancer here, which is your personal life, your inner child, uh, in combination of the deep transformation of heavy, deep inner stuff, uh, deep wounds, long time, old, past wounds, and, and the inner child, when it was not heard, nurtured, or supported, um, and whatever you need to let go of up here in Pisces and surrender this to life and say, okay, I'm not the role of the victim. Now I will start asking myself, how can I change so that this doesn't keep repeating? I would use these times, not only because of that, also because of the Mars retrograde. I talked about it last week when I said that Mars is going to come into a square again, as it was in the end of May, with Uranus. So what I meant was it's a long process of this Mars retrograde as it goes backwards and then forward again, of this particular thing that you seem that you feel is the heaviest thing in your life right now. And if it's two, if it's three things, don't feel like a victim. Just feel like, oh, probably I consider myself strong enough to deal with all of these. So I will have trust in that my higher self or inner, stronger, the soul part of myself is strong enough to handle it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on my plate. So we need to find some trust and trust the process and not escape from it. We live in a culture, which is also the water science. They say that um, this, the, the, the Pisces is the, are the ones that drink red wine, uh, cancer, beer, uh, Scorpio uh, drinks. I'm not saying that I know this is right. I don't, actually, I don't drink. Um, even in my younger years, I, it's not that I haven't tried to be completely drunk or anything like that. It's just that it's ruining my vibration spiritually. So I'm meditating every day, trying to keep up the energy high. If I drink, I will take it down again and I don't have to build it. Uh, and I don't really need it. I'm the type that would just, if you ask me now, I would get up and dance. I don't have um, these restrictions that I need. Uh, alcohol to, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing just for everyone to drink alcohol, but for me, with my purpose and my job as a guide and a channel, it will just clutter the, the, the whole field but the, of energy. But the point is that here, there can be a tendency to es escape because we are longing for that inner connectness, connectedness with all there is. But I strongly advise you not to do so, not to escape through medicine either. Like, the thing is that we are, we are now with the sun in Cancer. Once a year for a month, we're in Cancer. We need to get in contact with our personal feelings, what's going on inside of us. And often it hurts. There are things that hurt and we, we don't understand. We are like, oh, again, this role, Rick, the role of a victim. I'm not saying that I don't feel empathy for you because I'm also going through hard things. I also have things and people to let go of. So I'm not at all saying that I'm better than any of you. I'm just trying to help so that you take responsibility whatever, for whatever is going on. Because often in this society, we go to the doctor and we say, oh, we are so sad, I'm so sad. Oh no, you can't be sad. You know, that's society's response it, as it is in the Western world. Take some pills, you know, then you will be happy because we can't have you walking around being sad. And then I'm asking, why is it not allowed to be sad, to feel sorrow? And what do you think happens if you actually have sorrow or sadness inside and you go and drink, you put it, take some medicine or do drugs or whatever you do? What will happen to those feelings? Do you think they will go away from escaping from them? No, they come up because our whole system, our body, mind and soul are such intelligent, or we are so intelligent creatures. Our body is intelligent. It will tell you through pain, that something is out of balance here. It's, it's the body shouting, hello, or your system shouting, hello, something is not right here. Then you have to look upon, okay, is it something in my life, something I'm doing, something I'm repeating that is not right? Try to hear what it's saying. And it doesn't necessarily take a scientist. It takes for you to develop your intuition, the strength of this, of this trine, trine, grand trine. Um, because then you can hear your soul speaking. 
or your higher self, as Martin would say, call it, or your heart. And then you don't need a drug to escape because then you'll just suppress that feeling and it will come up at another time. And imagine if you've done, if you've done this a hundred of, hundreds of times, how much you've stuffed in here and why it always comes up as a shock whenever uh, on the schedule it's, it's time to get these things up. You get a shock because oh, all of these feelings, why are they there? Now it's time to look upon why are they there? Which old patterns do I have? How can I change it? Accept that you're sad. Stay in that sadness until you are ready to say, I will let you go. You don't need to hold on for it and talk about it for years. You can ask for that intelligent, undestroyed part of yourself to release it. And then give yourself the quiet time to do so. You cannot just by having the television running while you're drinking, while you're doing this, stimulating on the internet. If you do that all the time, when does your system have time to release? I don't care which system you use, I use heartfulness, but you can use whatever spiritual system, maybe you want to be a Buddhist, maybe you don't want to be anything at all, but just use the tools, as I am doing as well. I won't call me something in particular, any religion or anything like that, no, I'm using the tools that my heart is telling me to use for me to evolve. And as we have Saturn, as we have... Um, Mass retrograding in Aquarius. Aquarius is about the future. Which future do we want? And Mars is an aggressive sign that has frustrations and things, anger that it needs to let go of, or specifically in this time. So we have to just make sure that we don't just release it on other people. Ah, it's your fault. But try to be responsible in this process so that you can create the right future. Aquarius for yourself. Aquarius is also about friendships and circle of friends, of people around you. So you can ask yourself as it's going retrograde, it's looking, re it's revising, rediscovering which friends, which people, which circles is it good for me to hang around? Is there something I need to change in this process? And how can I follow my heart as I choose what's good for me and let go and in a diplomatic way communicate to these people why it's no longer time. Maybe these people then realize something through what you're saying and you're actually doing them a favor. Maybe they want to come along but didn't know that they were suppressing a side of you because you never told them. Or maybe they, it is time to say goodbye. But that's the letting go here of Pisces. Goodbye. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you for the love. Anyone on our path is our teachers, I will say. Anyone we meet has something to teach us. Yes. Even the ones that we don't like to admit <laughs> that are our teachers. This week is also Neptune's, uh, no, Venus' last tour in, in Leo before it goes into Virgo. And it will go through the last deacon. So this is definitely about following our heart and feeling what our inner core of our heart really wants in our connections with others, in our values, are the values that we are actually living also the ones that we really feel are right for us, in our circles, Mars up here. We also have some months, uh, more than some months left with the North Node in Leo, and we have Mercury here. Um, and it's going to come halfway as this week ends. Oh, the magnets are... <laughs> it's going to go halfway through Leo. I'm sorry if this is reflecting the light. It could be. I'm, I'm tr I was trying to keep it a little, but I have three, three LED lights here. But I'm hope hoping that you can see this. If not, it's okay. I'm also just mentioning it at the same time. Next week we will have a, an eclipse in Cancer. What I want to say about that is that this solar eclipse in Cancer, I'll say it short because we'll take it ne next week, is very important. There will be a lunar eclipse at the end of July 
which is what this Mars retrograde is preparing us for. I just talked about the future and the circles of people, having the right friends around you, but also detaching from emotions that are no longer serving you, but not let your frustrations and anger go to other people. And we will also have like, Jupiter is going retrograde over here, and it's been for three months, right? Um, in Scorpio. It will go forward next week. So we have some shiftings next week that are important, very important. So, um, but the energy then, as we are letting go, going into with the moon, going into Aries, then into Taurus. I need to get some film so that this doesn't reflect. I was just thinking about that. I went to Nippon, one of the biggest companies in Japan, a printing company, because of a collaboration I'm going to make with them with my brand and also some television probably uh, this week. It's a huge corporation. They make things for cars, computers, television, La Louvre in France, uh, museums, print money, print uh, anything you can print upon, food. Or, uh, I have never seen such a big company and I got a personal tour because of the collabor collaboration we're going to do. Uh, and these Japanese people are so amazing. We could learn so much from their kindness and gentleness. The way I was uh, received as I got there, the way they tour they gave me the tour, like the man I'm, I'm working with there, an older, older Japanese guy, um, he has such a great heart, it's amazing. Um, and the reason why I'm saying it is also because of the kindness that we need to, we need to be kind, like the Japanese are to other people. This kindness, you have to be kind to yourself and not beat yourself up once you realize, okay, maybe I cannot just blame the other people. We need to realize that other people are where they are for reasons. If you had their horoscope, you would probably be the same place. You are not necessarily right, but this is what's right for you. So as the moon moves into Aries and it just wants to go forward, be careful not to shoot anyone down on your quest to go forward. Maybe they have another quest, and that quest isn't necessarily wrong just because something else is right for you. I'm repeating that. Um, because sometimes we can get into conflicts with others, because here in Aries it's going to square things down in uh, Cancer and the bad boys up here in, in Capricorn. So. Uh, during this week, um, as Mars is also going to be in opposition to Mercury, and the communication can be a little tense, and, and then the Moon uh, is going to... Uh, uh, here we have Mercury in opposition to Mars. And the Moon going into Aries. So it can be a little wild as we go to the weekend. <laughs> Fight the Aries energy, use it in a positive way. Remember that anything I say, is, nothing is bad, really. Because there's a part of us that knows that it's all good and you just need to lean back, as you of course do your work, because with Saturn that's active in our charts, charged, we, we have to do hard work, but, but at the same time, let your soul enjoy this ride and, and enjoy anything as it unfolds. Try not to control too much. I want this to happen. I want that. You know, we go into Aries, the ego, and then the Taurus wants to manifest this and have that. That's the last part of the week that the moon is going there. Uh, and we think a lot about ourselves. But basically, our soul knows that we are all connected on a, a deeper level. So there's no need to force things through. The universe is going to unfold the plan step by step, whether you want it or not, <laughs> or whether you like it or not personally. But your inner core, the higher self, knows that it's all like it's supposed to be and that we planned this at one level, some level or another. Our soul made a schedule and therefore, as I said in the beginning, this program I will call it the role of the victim, letting go of the playing the victim. You don't need to play a victim. I know this may be provocative to your ego, but you made this plan for you. 
there's someone uh, charity from from heart from this uh, um, a master that died uh, recently actually um, beloved uh, master was uh, he said that until you reach the state of complete purity anything that happens in your life is a reflection of you take that and I'll give that 10 seconds of silence. Anything that happens around you is a reflection of things going on inside you. So who's responsible and who can change it? Let me go into the personal sun signs now. So this is the PSA for the collective, especially for Aries because it happens in Aries, but it's for all of us and it gets its own section because this is one of the very important things if you ask me for this week. For the first time in 50 years, Chiron goes retrograde in Aries. Chiron is where we feel inadequate, where we are broken somewhere inside where we feel ashamed of ourselves. It's the wounded healer, it's called. Because as Chiron had to heal his wounds, long story, I told it in another section, won't tell it again now, but you can ask and I will comment in the comment section if you want to know more. As Chiron healed from his wounds, he became the wounded healer and specialist in healing wounds. So Chiron is in Aries. What is Aries about? Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It is the first little plant that breaks through the soil, the sprout of uh, the energy arising after a long winter. It's spring coming. It's our identity. It's our expression of self. And when Chiron goes retrograde there, because it just came into Aries recently, only a few months ago, we started dealing with this part of ourselves which is perhaps the worst and the most critical part of, of our soul, of our, no not of our soul, but our soul in the body our, as human beings. And that is when we feel like that we are not wanted for who we are. We feel like someone wants us to not be there. When we feel we don't are adequate to exist. We don't feel like we belong here because people don't want us here. Someone don't want me here as I am. People want you to change because you are good, not good enough for who you are. You can be here but only if you are not yourself. And in Aries, because Aries is about your identity. I am, I want to go this direction. What do I want? What is my identity? But the crisis, the wound you can have here is when people don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like who you are. The feeling of someone saying that without words, with words, whenever, during your life or in lifetimes. This is the wound we're healing. I'm Aries. I have Mars within the first degree of Aries. It just went into Aries. So I've had Chiron now moving over my Mars in Aries. And I tell you that I have been confronted with old wounds of me and the family, not, in my, not my mom and my dad, not being wanted if I stood out as a spiritual person. I was considered lunatic and brainwashed for having my spirituality. This wound is coming up now and I have to stand up towards this part um, and say I am, I, I am allowed to be here as I am. I'm not trying to convince you to be spiritual as me, but there cannot be rules, that's what I'm going through, for, for that this group of people can be exactly how they are, scientists, 
professors or whatever that we have in our society. But you can only say what we want. If you say something from your group, you're not wanted here anymore. This is an old wound of mine, more than 20 years and lifetimes, long story. I, maybe you have something similar in your life. This is not the only part, it's also about my, the environment I am in um, often. In my life these days, these times, uh, I have to fit in and I have to cut a toe, what you call in English, cut a heel and cut a toe, uh, you know, like in Cinderella when she has to fit the shoes, she cut. Actually, I have, a, I have a wound here on my toe <laughs> from wearing shoes that weren't nice. Uh, but uh, anyways, um, my point is just that wherever you feel like you identity-wise are not welcomed as you are, this is the time to heal this wound. Now Chiron is going retrograde. We have the ability to look over it again and see how we can heal this section of a part of ourselves. How we can be as we are um, whole and not needing necessarily to say it out loud or shout it out loud. I am like this, you know. It's more that peace you feel when you rest harmonically, peacefully in your own identity with no need to shout, no need to do anything because you know that you are welcome and okay just the way you are. And if you are not, it has nothing to do with you. Also the acceptance of that is amazing. That is what I am working upon. Accepting the people that don't appreciate me for who I am without judging them. Saying they come from where they come from and that is also okay. This goes for all signs. Identity-wise, of course, through each sign it will be something different. Um, for Taurus, it's in the 12th house of the spirituality, the, the way they uh, approach uh, their identity of spirituality, um, or to contact with, with God or, or psychological nature. Um, again, when I say God, I don't mean religion at all. It's just an expression for whatever created us. Um, you know, to put words on whatever created this is also already then a little wrong. Because something that big in one little word. For Gemini, it's the 11th house. It's the identity within groups, uh, circles of friends, etc. A cancer, uh, it's uh, the 10th house. It's how they express themselves uh, in, um, at their work, at their uh, career-wise. Uh, their uniqueness of how they express themselves in their career. Um, as a room for this, uh, the Leos, uh, it's the ninth house, um, the spirituality and the, you know, the guru-like condition where they you have the grand overview in their special way, the Virgos, um, for the Virgos it's in the eighth house, so this is where they share resources with others, forces beyond their control, deep transformation, how they transform on a deeper level and connect sexually to a partner in their own special way. Then we have Libra. Um, I'm turning the wheel inside of my head here. <laughs> um, I didn't uh, rehearse for, for this. I don't I try to do this spontaneously. So if I have some errors, or sometimes it's because I'm trying to let the flow give, let me know what to say. For the Libras, it's uh, about the partner. You know, crisis within, how am I in a partnership? can also be that for, for Aries, actually. Um, it's not only the identity, it's on this axis, the, the partner axis. How do partner, the partners see me and, and uh, welcome me as I am? Can I be like I want to be in a partnership uh, or is my partner not accepting me for who I am? Uh, then the Taurus, it's the day-to-day -day lifestyle, uh, routines, um, the work they do every day is a time, like, they like to do it their own way, uh, and has there been a neg neglect of that from someone that didn't want the Scorpios to, to express themselves in their own uh, way in this regard? So then we have the Sag, it's in their romantic life with their par romantic partners or with the children, um, or just the creative expression of being in love with life in their own special way. Um, for, uh, for the Capricorns, uh, it's a family. Uh, 
how are they within the family? Oof, that's also, that's not easy. Such an important thing like in their personal life, being accepted for how they are, who they are in their personal life. I have very dear friends and also uh, many people I did readings for, being Capricorn, that really have a crisis on this one, where they not really have, where they aren't really accepted for how they want to build a family uh, and do things. Um, uh, Aquarius, uh, for Aquarius is the third house of communication. How do I express myself? Um, how do I, you know, uh, go about when I spontaneously uh, express my um, my way of communicating, my, my way of thinking, you know, because it's a sudden uh, epiphanies and ideas, you know, for the Aquarian mind, and, and maybe they're not accepted for this way of, of detaching and, and in their mind being able to jump. Uh, so fast and so genius, like, um, but being criticized for being um, not being right, perhaps in this way. Um, for the Pisces, is their values, their habits, their finances, uh, the way they they run this um, a crisis within this, uh, and um, yeah, and we also have the personal sun signs, of course, um, which will come now. I will talk more about Chiron, of course, as we go along. I can just say <laughs> and sign that uh, oof, that this has not been easy, but it's. I can also feel how much I will benefit from it, and all of us if we grab and, and own this, own our thing, and heal it, and be gentle with ourselves, and find ways to clean it out so we don't get stuck in it, and to get across the barrel or oh, don't know what you call it, you know and uh, you have to get over a fence to get to move on or something you know and this is what we need to do and have faith in that you can do it because one thing I'm sure of for sure is that it is possible for all of us to heal our wounds for sure so Let's move on to the sun science. Thank you. Hi there, Scorpio. So uh, this week is interesting for you. For us, I am uh, a Scorpio. I'm Libra rising 29 point something degrees. So I'm... Uh, actually a cusp Scorpio rising so yes I know where we are coming from there are different uh, interesting things going on this week as you heard in the collective report uh, one of the things that are especially interesting if you ask me is the quarter square moon in the sixth house um, because this is the link between your day-to-day -day routines, your health, uh, your habits, your well, well, what's going on in your day-to-day -day life. There's something you're not content about, something that <clears throat> you would like to change. Um, and this is uh, coming, it's, it's in a square to the, to the sun up there, of course, because that's why it's a quarter square moon in Cancer. And uh, this means that you, have, you feel an urge to travel, to expand, to have to release yourself somehow uh, in a new way to look at into a future a brighter future a better future for you there's something you're not satisfied or content with in your day-to-day -day life try only to do the the things that are really necessary focus upon those and don't take in too much um, in your daily routines then you can really benefit from it uh, because we also have the sun in your ninth house uh, making a, a nice aspect to Jupiter, as I said before, in your first house. So something about you re-evaluating your identity and trying to figure out where you want to go. Um, preparing yourself for Jupiter moving forward in your sign next week, meaning that things will start moving again. You, you, now you're building for this. It's been three months. Or is it four? It's, it's no, it's four, almost four months. Jupiter has been retrograde in your sign, so uh, it will feel like you'll have a push forward next week. And now you're, it's leading up to it with the with the with the good aspect between the sun and Jupiter. So, so take advantage of that and don't. I mean, 
Don't let yourself be annoyed by, for example, there can be, we have the opposition between Mercury and uh, Mars <laughs> in your 10th, Mercury in your 10th house, you have a career where you think about your few, how, how you want to, Uh, what you want to do in your career and maybe start communicating about it, start doing whatever, uh, maybe you need to rehearse before uh, some something big that you know is going to happen in your career, maybe you need to practice, maybe you have to need look over things, st start talk with the, talk with people, start getting, start to get it going. But it's in, in opposition to Mars uh, in your fourth house, in your personal life, in your emotional sphere. So maybe you can be a little, and Mars is retrograde, a little bit emotional um, about it at the same time and feel, oh, am I like insecure because the fourth house is also uh, security, not in the same way as the second, but emotional security. So maybe you feel insecure about something uh, work-wise or someone is criticizing you at work in the work situation saying you're not good enough and then you f or maybe just saying something that's not even close to saying that you're not good enough but it hits you in a way where you feel oh, maybe I'm not good enough um, uh, but of course you are you have Jupiter in your sign and uh, you are such a strong sign Scorpio you have this immense power and resource within you that makes you do over humanly uh, Um, presta uh, prestationer. Um, you can achieve, you can do things that no one else can in the hor in the zodiac because you have that extra strength. If you just turn it on, then you can move forward in in a really good way. I'm certain. You just need to remember that this week you expand your mind. You think about where, where, where traveling. You think about uh, broadening your perspective in a passionate way and then you move forward and you take and grab the opportunity. You use the, the mercury uh, in your 10th house to think clearly, cut through whatever you don't need so that you only focus upon in your day-to-day -day life what will benefit this goal for the future that you've seen through the sun and cancer aspecting to your first house where Jupiter is, then it will be awesome. I see an awesome week for you guys. Just don't fall into the hole of your, you being too emotional and not believing in yourself. Stay on the plus side and it will go awesome. Big hugs to my Scorpios. So welcome to this week's special. Uh, this week it's about how the different signs would eat or what they would eat. Just a brief one. And if you don't agree with it and think that your sign is very different from that, please let me know through a comment. This is just how I imagine it. I was having this conversation with my father and he was like, this is how I think they would do it. And he's so funny. So uh, yeah, <laughs> the different signs that is. So let's start with Aries. What I always like, I assume, is to, you know, mm, have some fresh uh, things to put in their uh, food, you know, fresh vegetables, or maybe just a, a really strong beef or something that can give them strong proteins. That, well, now I'm a vegetarian, so that wouldn't be the case in my case. But, you know, something that can give them some, more, uh, some energy and they're athletic, they love to eat, to, to move and, and do sports and stuff like that. Um, but it can also be that when they're talking, or when they're, sp they're eating, they'll just be like very fast, <laughs> on to the next uh, thing because, yeah, you know, then they can, they can uh, get all the things done that they are starting because they start new things and they have to eat fast and while they're eating, they have an idea of what then they can do then, then they have to hurry up.
So Pisces, this this is my father again. We blame it on him. He would say anything that gets you. Summer, summer, summer time. Summer time. Summer time. I have no time. Summer, summer, summer time. Summer time. Honey, honey, so.